congratulations. Thank you. So, let's start with a fairly obvious question. Filth is a pretty gruesome and gr you know, grim and grisly book. How do you go about translating that to screen? Yeah, I think it's a grisly book, and it's, the, the book's a hell of a lot darker than the film, and, and, and I never wanted to do a literal translation. I don't think anybody would come to see it if you did, or else if you were, you'd be stuck in an art house with, with, a, with a smaller audience, you know, and that was never something I wanted to do. I wanted to make it big, bold. You see by the posters and the marketing and James's performance and everything, it's not that. It's, you know, it is bold and it's surreal. Uh, but underneath it all, it's a very dark comedy and it's a tragic love story, you know, and I think those were the keys really were to to, to make it uh, to pull the heart out of it you know into 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 help an audience go on Bruce's journey and the book's more about his physical decline the film is more about his psychological decline you know um, and obviously when you cast a guy like James McAvoy you know that that helps a, a hell of a lot because straight away you're lifting uh, audience expectations out into something else you know so um, it was a challenge because they said it was an unfilmable novel. But I didn't think that, you know, and Irvin didn't think that either. I just thought people who tried to adapt it before were just taking the wrong approach. Uh, but I loved doing the adaptation. It was one of the most enjoyable work experiences I've ever had because I just loved the material. I understand that there was some stuff left on the cutting room floor, though. Yeah. How much of the film then was found in the edit? rather than on sort of scripts at scripts uh, the, the, the film is pretty much exactly like the script apart from two big set piece scenes uh, which will be in the DVD extras for anybody who's interested in buying that um, so the film is exactly how the script is apart from these two big chunks and the reason that they never made it was because it just took the, the viewer out of Bruce's journey and out of his headspace you know and it just took him it, it just it just it just deflected him away from from his you know, his rise and fall. They were kind of sighted. They were extremely funny scenes, but they were set pieces, you know. They weren't integral to the actual film, so. Bruce is quite a weedy character in the book, and yet James is certainly not, and I understand he put on weight for the role as well. What was the logic behind that choice? Well, I don't know how much weight James put on, you know. I think what James wanted to do was is more like blow himself around the face to make himself look older. Um, and there's, the, there's, there's debate whether Bruce is, you know, big or, or thin or whatever, but Irvin always says he's thin because there's a tapeworm in the book eating him from the inside. Um, but again, you know, with Irvin's previous adaptations, some people have different ideas of what his characters look like, but the testament is what Irvin thinks, you know. And Irvin has said on record that he feels James's portrayal of Bruce is more like any character he's ever written on screen, you know, so... If he's happy with it, I'm totally happy with it, you know. Marvellous. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations.